Did you know that you can use your bandsaw like a small scale sawmill? It's pretty cool, not real hard to do. I'm about to do it with this bandsaw. Now a couple things I've done to get ready for this. I've got an elm log here. The log is dripping wet green. It was fairly freshly cut. You do want to cut the logs while they're wet, while they're green. I've got a right angle fixture that I fastened to the log. There's screws through the fixture and into the log and that acts like a little outrigger here. It helps stabilize everything. Without this right angle fixture, the log might roll as you're starting to cut into it. Could bind up your blade, do all sorts of bad stuff. On top of the log, I've got a line that I snapped with a chalk line that goes basically from pith to pith. I'm going to freehand follow that line for my first cut, get these babies cut right in two, then I'll show you what it looks like inside here. Now, you can see what that elm looks like inside. It's got beautiful grain. Now, here's a question for you. Where would you buy elm? And the answer is you can't really buy it commercially made, but here's a way that you can cut it out of stuff that otherwise would have gone into your fireplace. Another great application for this, let's say you've got a tree in your front yard that's been there forever, but the day comes when it's got to go down. It's the tree that your kids had swings on that they climbed in. Wouldn't it be cool to take some of those pieces, cut them into planks, and make them into lumber that you can use in your shop to make heirloom gifts for your family. For the next step, we'll get a resaw fence set up on the saw, put this face of the half section against the fence, and start cutting planks out of the half section. Now one step in between making the half section and using the fence is I cut another flat here on the bottom of the half section. That way when the half round comes up here onto the band saw, it's less likely to be able to roll away from the fence. I put my resaw fence on the saw and I did a drift compensation there to make sure my fence was correctly set. I've got the distance between the blade and the fence set to the thickness of the material that I want to make. I'm going to cut four quarter or one inch material in this case, so between the blade and the fence is set for an inch. Now with that set, we can just start ripping pieces off of here, making planks just like a sawmill would. Now I'll take this piece and run it against the fence. Let's have a look though at good reasons for doing this. I already said one thing that we can't buy is elm planks. Now when I look at this piece, I have a beautiful book match between these two parts. So what I'll do with these is I'll set them aside, I'll keep them numbered, let them dry, and then if I keep track of which piece is which, when I use these in a project, I can get a beautiful book match in my project between these two parts. I'll finish cutting this one up. I hope you try this technique out in your own shop. Again, just using a regular bandsaw, you can do a little bit of sawmill work.